gentlemen, a progress report on the new Walt Disney World in Florida. This room at the Walt Disney Studios is the command post for Project Florida. Here are the aerial photographs and survey maps, the plans and models that were the beginning of Walt Disney's greatest dream. A few short years ago, surrounded by these same maps and plans and models, Walt spoke of this dream. Welcome to a little bit of Florida here in California. This is where the early planning is taking place for our so-called uh, Disney World project. But before I go into any of the details, I want to say just a word about the site of our Florida project. As you can see on this map, we have a perfect location in Florida, almost in the very center of the state. In fact, we selected this site because it's so easy for tourists and Florida residents to get here by automobile. Now, in larger scale on this map, our Florida land is located partly in Orange County and Osceola County between the cities of Orlando and Kissimmee. And the important thing is that the Disney World is located just a few miles from the crossing point of Interstate 4 and Sunshine State Parkway. Florida's major highways carrying motors east and west and north and south to the center of the state. We're now developing a master plan that encompasses the theme park and all the facilities around it that will serve the tourists. Hotels, motels, and a variety of recreation activities. In fact, just this little area alone is five times the size of Disneyland in California. Well, as you can see on this master plan, the theme park and all the other tourist facilities Still just one small area of our enormous Florida project. According to this scale, I am six miles tall. Now it's 12 miles from here up to here, and the whole area encompasses 27,400 acres. That is 43 square miles, twice the size of the island of Manhattan. Here in Florida, we have something special we never enjoyed at Disneyland. A blessing of size. There's enough land here to hold all of the ideas and plans we could possibly imagine. Right now, our plans include an airport of the future down here in Osceola County. An entrance complex where all visitors will enter Disney World. An industrial park area covering about 1,000 acres. And of course, the theme park area way up here. Everything in this room may change time and time again as we move ahead. But the basic philosophy of what we're planning for Disney World is going to remain very much as it is right now. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions. And so, Walt Disney's great dream became reality. Very early in the game, it began to be unveiled for the public. Always the showman, Walt had decided it should have its own proper setting. And so, one of the first buildings to be completed on the site was this handsome information headquarters and reception center. Inside the reception center, a special theater had been constructed in which to present the Disney World story. The main feature was a scale model visualization of what Disney World would look like on opening day. And here it is. The parking lot in the foreground, Bay Lake for water sports on the right, the tropical lagoon with its resort hotels on the left, and the theme park with its towering Cinderella castle in the distance. As our hostess and tour guide tells the story in full detail, suppose we pretend we are opening day visitors. Where do we go first? Well, it's likely we would leave our car and our cares behind us 
hop on the Disney World monorail and find ourselves delivered to the exciting new contemporary hotel. Not just at the doorstep, but right in the lobby, only a few steps from our room. Next stop, if there are kids in the family, almost certainly the Magic Kingdom. Recreation for the whole family. Rides, theaters, entertainment, restaurants. More of this story later. Now suppose mom and dad want a game of golf. Two championship courses with lots of water hazards to test their every shot. Perhaps lunch on the way at the new Disney-designed and Disney-managed Asian Hotel. The Polynesian Hotel will carry one to the South Pacific and even supply a coral reef where one may dive for pearls. All of these new hotels will be managed and run as a working part of Walt Disney World. This one is a bit of Venice and St. Mark's Square, Venetian throughout in design and decor. This one will be a vision out of the Arabian Nights, the Persian Hotel, a veritable palace of the hotel keeper's art. For simpler tastes, there will be the trailer park campground, a small-scale city in itself. And along with it, the Diamond D Dude Ranch, where small-sized cowpoke meets large-sized horse. Who cares about girls? Unless it might be this one. Afterwards, a tour along the Art Walk. Here, every phase and every facet of Walt Disney World is sketched and visualized in complete detail. This was Walt Disney's way, part of his meticulous thoroughness. Here is the decor of the Polynesian Hotel, whose rich interiors will reflect the exotic arts and graces of the South Pacific. And here is the hotel to be as contemporary as tomorrow, where the monorail will pause in the lobby itself. These two hotels will be the first to be made ready for guests on opening day. Besides the monorail, there will be water transportation of every sort. Sailboats, water taxis, and excursion steamers. This is the side-wheeler Osceola that will ply Bay Lake and all the inviting byways of the tropical lagoon. And these will be the landmark features of the theme park itself. The Cinderella Castle, towering above fantasy land like a vision from a fairy tale. The railroad station, done in the grand manner, what might be called Victorian grand. The city hall. Every proper American town has to have a city hall. As Walt always said, here is where children can find lost parents. Main Street, America, period 1910, reflecting Walt Disney's own boyhood. Here is a place dedicated to the American spirit, to fun and frolic, and to nostalgia. And Liberty Square, USA. Here, the visitor will go back in time to colonial days and come to know something of our American heritage. This reception center has been open since February 1969, and already a half million people have passed through its doors. Walt Disney World itself expects eight million people in its first year, and will open to the public in October of this year. Walt Disney's greatest dream was left in competent hands. His brother and lifelong partner, Roy Disney, became head of the planning team. And with a zeal born of dedication, he plunged into the task. And so there began a series of on-the-site inspection trips, often as not by Roy Disney himself, who, like Walt before him, wanted to see how things were going. In the scenes that follow, you too will watch a dream coming true. time almost, it looked like this. The construction site began to look like the model. Buildings taking shape, even streets and plazas beginning to appear. Approaching from the lagoon, when later there is a lagoon, 
we would disembark at this boat dock, make our way under the railroad embankment, and continue up Main Street toward the central plaza in front of the castle. Circling the castle, we can see that it's as sturdy as any medieval castle. But the food will be better. A first-class restaurant on the top floor will provide the best view in the park. The two grandiose concoctions in the foreground are not birthday cakes created by some giant confectioner, but a railroad station and a city hall. Remember the sketches? Now the artist's dream has become a tangible reality. Still further evidence of Disney thoroughness. This whole operation from start to finish was recorded on film. And here's our documentary cameraman setting out to make this day's report. Meanwhile, his assistants have manned the 50-foot tower that stands on what will be the central plaza, the very hub of the Magic Kingdom. His camera records their activity, and theirs record his coming by. A case of picture takers taking pictures of picture takers. Of course, there was a good practical reason for all this camera coverage. It became a constant check on construction progress. No one was permitted to forget that target date, October 1971. Production query. How are the golf courses coming along? Practical answer? We'll have a quick look-see. This is the Palms course, with the magnolia in the distance. The greens are in, the sand traps located, with the fairways yet to be planted. There's a hole for you. To get to it, you'll have to cross either by bridge or narrow causeway. You do, that is. Your bow? That's another matter. Our helicopter driver couldn't resist this challenge. He wanted to pretend he was a golf ball. Can you hook or slice with a helicopter? Whatever you do, man, stay out of the trees. Good flying, Mr. Heligolfer. Right on, right on. Conservation was always part of Walt Disney's plan. And much of the property will be left in its original state, preserved for all future time as a wildlife sanctuary. The great blue heron flying above it is almost a symbol of the wilderness spirit that will be left entirely untouched. In the park itself, meanwhile, one of the last big jobs is the monorail, the sky-running railway that will circle the entire premises. The tall pylons are in place, the streamlined cars are being readied for a first trial run, and here come the tracks, arches of solid concrete. Getting them to the park is an engineering feat in itself. For each of these spans is 110 feet long and weighs approximately 55 tons. Lifting them into place becomes almost an exercise in bridge building. 300 of these giant beams to create 5 miles of elevated track. Let's make a magic carpet jump to California to see what fantastic shows and attractions are being planned for inside these fanciful buildings. In California, a part of the Disney organization is known as Wed Enterprises, formed by Walt Disney years ago when he was planning Disneyland itself. From the very beginning of Project Florida, Wed has been busily at work doing what we call Imagineering, blending creative imagination with technical know-how. This may look like an explosion in a toy factory, but it's really one of our most charming attractions called It's a Small World. There will be nearly 300 of these doll-like figures representing children from around the world. 
what each one has been made an individual with his or her own cheerful face and native dress. Here again, carefully built scale models have been made so that our artists and designers can see just what the final appearance will be. And in a more serious vein, other Imagineers are working on a show to be called The Hall of Presidents. This will honor the men who have held the highest office this nation can bestow. For months, our artists and researchers have pored over hundreds of books and paintings and photographs, studying each president in minute detail. Beginning with George Washington himself, every president of the United States has been meticulously sculptured in life-size. All this so that each may come alive and be part of a contemporary moment of history. When all are finally assembled in common conclave, we shall hear Abraham Lincoln's inspiring words from the past, words of presidential prophecy which are as valid today as in earlier times. In contrast to the Hall of Presidents, let's see how a somewhat less serious attraction is developed. Here, one of our artist designers sketches out the members of a troupe of rather unusual bear vaudevillians. This is Henry, the master of ceremonies. He heads up a down-home country music review. Now, the next step is to work out the routines of every act. Story sessions are held in which writers bounce ideas back and forth. And as part of the game, act out every part. This is Gomer playing a few bars to open the show. Now Henry takes the spotlight and says, Howdy, folks. Welcome to the show. Now we go back to Gomer for a solo on the music box. Uh, any similarities between Gomer and our story man are coincidental? Here we see the magic of what we call audio animatronics. Of course, it isn't really magic. It's a skillful blending of imagination, electronics, and computer technology. Howdy, folks! Howdy there, Clarence. Welcome to the one, the only, the original Country Bear Review. Featuring a bit of Americana, our musical heritage from the past. But enough of this chit-chat, yak-yak and flim-flam. Just refrain from hibernating. <laughs> then we'll all enjoy the show. Now, play on there, Gomer. Born on the mountaintop in Tennessee. The greenest state in the land of the free. Raised in the woods so he knew every tree. Killed him a bar when he was only three. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. Well, that's about all we have time for. We'd better let our Imagineers get on with their work. They have a lot left to do. We have an opening date deadline, and time is hurrying by. So let's go back to Florida for a last-minute look at progress there. Remember, opening October 1971. That's the catchphrase now. And a couple of Disney characters materialize on the scene to see if a little magic will help. Along Main Street, buildings are looking bright and new and finished. Scaffolding is coming down. But there's much to be done. And as deadlines approach, time runs by, the tempo of things picks up. It not only picks up, it begins to get a bit hectic. With the help of a little trick photography, of course.
Project Florida, Walt Disney's greatest dream. But this is only the beginning. Over the years ahead, there's more to come. For as Walt always said, it will never really be finished. There's always room for new ideas and new achievements. Opening day, October 1971. A gala occasion, a time of celebration, a time for fun and fireworks.